when I went to school, I was very excited about all forms of entertainment, specifically computer graphics. Um, and of course, that started leading into virtual reality, augmented reality, because that was always the latest coming out in computer graphics. Um, a lot of my work has been focused on accessibility in terms of trying to make different interfaces and formats that people everywhere can enjoy, no matter what income, wherever you're working, what background you have. Um, and so those just kind of started melding together because I also feel like music is a universal experience too. Um, and I feel everyone gets should have the opportunity to experience it in multidimensional ways. Thank you, we loved hearing that. One of my favorite words to hear in these spaces is, is accessibility. So I really appreciate that. What about you, Marlon? Yeah, so uh, the question is what, what got me into the space, right? Um, you know, I didn't know anybody that worked in tech until after college, actually. Um, I grew up in Eastside Long Beach, you know, where Sublime, Snoop Dogg, all these sounds, G-Funk um, was, was common, was, was really sort of our bedrock. But um, it wasn't until much later that I began to, you know, get to know people that worked in tech. And it was, a, it was an article in Wired um, in the early 2000s that, that really kind of struck a nerve for me that was penned by Jimmy Ivan. He said that the future really depended of, of culture, really depended on people that had an understanding of, of engineering, of the digital economy, but that were also like culturally um, relevant, that, that, that also understood what culture is supposed to feel like. And so um, as a DJ, as a, as, a, as a, you know, crate digger, somebody that grew up, um, you know, really participating in music communities, um, but had an interest and in, 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 in the curiosity to dive into technology, um, you know, I, I took it as a responsibility to be, you know, one of the bricklayers, you know, that would create some of these platforms so that it feels right. And to this day, you know, I continue being that person in the room that's going to stand up for the culture, to stand up for the people that, you know, are not, you know, at Google that are not at Meta, that are not at these places, but that are out, you know, in the streets, you know, carrying records, you know, throwing backyard parties, getting the jams on, you know, so that this feels right, you know, at the yeah. end of the day. So that, that's why. Cool. It's it's like you're trying to make music a kind of like BBB said, a universal experience for everyone, make it inclusive and everything. That's great. That's great. Uh, so he. Um, I have actually a background in industrial design and came from a really, really practical place where I was designing medical tools and industrial products. Cool. And at some point, um, my kind of love for technology coming from more of like a tech and ID hybrid really inspired me to continue and dive into that technology. And I found myself at places like Microsoft working on HoloLens for really practical reasons. Um, and then, you know, working at IDEO and all these design companies kind of put me on that track. And I had stumbled upon uh, an alumni connection um, and was sold an idea of making music for the metaverse. And what that really brought for me was I grew up dancing. My mom is a dance teacher and have always been in performance. And I never thought that would kind of be a part of my, my professional career. And so being able to take the, the practical utilitarian mind of industrial design and figure out how we can take this technology and have it have longevity over just like pizzazz or excitement, I think is the, the coolest thing for me. And also bringing in performance and unbounded creativity to find the balance between those two has really been exciting in a place that's music forward, but also now going to be a new future. Beautiful, beautiful. I love hearing about your guys' backgrounds. I know for some of the independent artists we have here, they don't come from music, you know, as a family familiar lines. Um, so having all of these different backgrounds in tech and you said medicine <laughs> and um it's really great seeing the diversity here last but not least griffin i i've always wanted to create a sensory complete experience through music and tech and that exactly is the center of it i want to bring the art the music the culture and the tech space all together to create a new unique experience and as mentioned earlier whether it's the grammys which i actually had the opportunity to attend or having like a drink named after me in my, my city, being an influencer, it's part, it's part of my role to 
as well as being a CEO, part of my role to make sure that the new wave of tech and the online world is not as materialistic as the real world might require. For example, a live concert with all those big speakers will give you a full body feeling of the music as the ground beneath your legs carries the beads. A lot of real world factors that make a person enjoy music are missing in the online world, which is why there's new opportunities like cutting off real world disturbances around a listener and making them connect from the part of the world that they can enjoy. And three examples of this are first, which I'll go into more in depth later, music learning with AR and VR, music concerts like Wave VR and Fortnite, and then 360 music videos. And additionally, what this is right now in decentralized land. Hey, thank you so much, Griffin. And I'm looking forward to having this conversation with y'all. So my next question for you is, um, can you tell me about how your role plays a part in the grander scheme of connecting the real and online worlds in music and technology? And I'll start with Marlon. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, something that's really fascinating me right now, I think, is um, as, as many of you, you can, can attest, you know, we're, we're living in a time where digital assets are becoming uh, very, very uh, ubiquitous with uh, fandom, uh, with, with uh, uh, just in general kind of having our, our digital lives. And what we do at Looking Glass is we bring a lot of those um, 3D assets into the real world by way of holographic interfaces. And so I'm excited about, you know, being able to Kind of build a bridge between your digital life and your physical reality by way of some of these different devices. Um, with Looking Glass, it's cool because it's it's a shared experience. Um, so it's not a headset experience. Uh, it, it is a uh, an interface experience. And so uh, these are uh, I think opportunities for for fans and, and artists, labels, and teams to uh, look at how they might. Um, not, not to mention just really keep 3D, 3D. You know, that's something that I always talk about is, you know, we see some of these uh, NFTs that are, you know, that are that are created in 3D and then they're brought to back to 2D. You know, they kind of flatten them because, you know, the world for the most part is, is a 2D uh, space. So it's exciting to, to bring things into 3D. Yes. Um, what about Sophie? Uh, I think this is something that I've been really interested in for a long time. Before it used to be physical design and UX. It was like the greatest battle of all time when they said products were gonna die and we were just gonna live in our phone, right? Um, and then it was industrial design and tangible media. And so the Arduinos were whipped out and everyone was making these like, you know, little gadgets and bots. And now we're in a place where you can actually be fully immersed in the virtual and also experiment with AR and VR. And I think to me, there are some things about the physical world that we should try and preserve to keep authentic. And we shouldn't view VR and AR as a mode of escapism. But what I love about the word AR is it's augmenting your reality, it's supporting, it's supplementing, it's bringing creativity to a new space that really wasn't accessible ever. And so to me, it's never where can I place a AR and where can I place XR? It's why, where is it the most useful? Where is it the most exciting? Um, and where does it have the most value? And so really as artists and designers and creatives and engineers and all, all that uh, good stuff, I think our goal is to try and find where our backgrounds and skills can support how AR can be best used, not just how AR can be used. Definitely. And just for clarification, can you explain to me what UX is? Yeah. So user experience design, user interface design. So it's more like when you're designing um, experiences more like on your phone right now, but in the future, UX UI will definitely be applied to augmented reality and 3D spaces. And so uh, those terminologies will have new definitions in the coming years for sure. Well, I notice everything in these industries are evolving and you got to keep up with it. <laughs> what about Griffin? As you said, everything is evolving and there's many industries in this world with different work style and objectives. Every industry, including AR and VR, have icons and those who have accomplished many things. It's an honor to be here with these legends in this tech space. 
um, Disney and Looking Glass, for example, um, really have revolutionized tech and and as well as into the entertainment space as well, of course. So how I feel about this is that with VR and AR, the first thing that people should do in regards to this is start start reading about it and start start somewhere start reading about it. This is a great start. People being in the metaverse, witnessing history. You know, this is a panel in the metaverse, and all of this technology keeps evolving, and it's amazing to see this. Awesome. Thank you so much, Griffin and Emily. What what would you like to add? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, a lot of virtual space understanding is purely rooted in our understanding of physical 3D space, right? And that goes so hand in hand, especially and specifically with music. If you think about it, our sense of hearing is our only, well, not our only, but our main spatial understanding of the world around us. Um, so for me personally, in terms of grounding um, my work in AR VR with physical reality, it automatically already goes hand in hand, um, especially being what Sohi was talking about, a user experience designer for VR and AR. Um, a lot of my work is rooted in understanding, okay, how do people work? How do we interact with the world around us now? And how can we bring that understanding into the digital world? Um, because it's not necessarily this war between the digital and the physical. These things can go hand in hand, exactly to piggyback on all the other panelists here too. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. And my next question, because I am new to the VR, AR space, and maybe some people here in the central as well, um, what are some differences and similarities between those two uh, realms, VR and AR? Um, whoever might, whoever knows the most can go answer the question. <laughs> AR overlays. Yes, AR overlays are helping you listen. Helping, for example, in the music industry, they're helping learners play piano and instruments. And mm -hmm. then that's, I'm, I'm more on, of course, with AR studios, our focus is with entertainment. So for example, 360 music videos, my friend Eddie, uh, his Instagram is, is goes by Crime City Films. He's, he's been doing 360 music videos for huge artists. And augmented reality, on the other hand, that's, that's, that allows people to be immersive in it with 360. That's a, for example, a project. Augmented reality are when you see, when you be able to scan it and it was, it's able to change as an example of augmented reality. Hmm. Okay, thank you so much for explaining that. <laughs> so next I'd question. Like, oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'd like to add, you know, um, and, yeah. and this is uh, uh, going back to some projects uh, at the MIT Media Lab uh, Reality Hack. If anybody's ever done that hackathon, it's awesome, really, really fun. But one thing that I, I, I just want to add is that, you know, AR uh, should be inclusive of many other um, any other types of uh, perception, whether it's like sound, you know, how do we augment the world uh, with sound, with touch, with smell, with, you know, because I feel like there is a visual bias, you know, where AR just only means 3D graphics laid over, you know, physical reality. A couple of years ago at the Reality Hack, we did an AR project with the Bose headphones that have um, you know, sensors in them. And, you know, my, one of my, my team lead was, was uh, uh, you know, he, he, he was blind from birth. So uh, just to kind of give a sense of, of the possibilities of the concept of AR, you know, going beyond, you know, just visual media. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, and just so, sorry, more clarification, would the Oculus be VR, virtual reality then? So, or could it also be AR? I can add to this too. Cool. Yeah. So one way that I like to think about it is which senses are being enveloped or which senses are being um, surplus, you could say, um, and which ones you have are you have not necessarily lost total control of, but allowed another device to get total control of. So for VR, I like to think of it as, OK, it is entirely immersing you in digital media. Whereas where mm -hmm. AR, it's okay, I'm supplementing the world around me with any different forms of senses, exactly like Marlon was talking about. It can be audio, it can be visual, it can be even sense of smell or taste, right? Um, that's where the world can truly expand and understanding, okay, this is not just necessarily graphics overlaid on top of the world. This can be all encompassing. 
Um, so some of the best well-known examples of this, like with VR, like you said, the Oculus headset, that is entirely virtual. You are looking only at virtual elements. You've got sound to go along with it, right? It's a fully immersive experience. Um, examples of AR include what so, so he was talking about before, like the Microsoft HoloLens. Um, you might also have heard of something called the Magic Leap. Um, these kind of, or the, of course the Bose um, sunglasses that also have the audio as well. These allow the world, the physical world to maintain itself while also adding on top of it in any way, any fashion, any sense. Awesome, thank you so much for that clarification. So my next question for y'all is from your experience, what VR or AR projects have you seen that are really interesting to you and um, how are they impacting the music industry? And Sohi, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, you know, I think there are so many different types of projects now that are at, at the at the birth of being really awesome. But I'm gonna just reference social media, which everyone's gonna roll their eyes for, I'm sure. But uh, in terms of augmented reality, I think that is ultimately the most like publicly consumed and um, accepted version of AR right now. Um, everyone uses filters and is exploring the world and AR and technology really seamlessly, whether that's through animojis or, you know, adding stickers or making your own filters or uh, what I think is cool now is you see a lot of people creating music tools on Instagram filters through tools that, you know, Meta and Snapchat make so that people can easily develop in it. But being, having the ability to actually create things if you're not a technical person is the most exciting part about these platforms is they're asking all types of people from all walks of life to be involved in developing a new technology quickly and together in ways that aren't restricted or gatekept by industry rules or um, design you know rules and all that kind of stuff and so Though it might not be the most experimental thing going on right now, I think it really does excite me because it brings a lot of people into the conversation super quickly. Definitely, definitely. I never even thought about that being a part of this realm. Um, I see a lot of like just random people or regular people like me making all those filters. I was like, can I do this too? So maybe I can. <laughs> Griffin, I see you unmuted yourself. You can go next. Yes, I actually got into the art space through making Instagram filters in addition to I was doing rotoscoping, which is where animators use the way of tracing over motion picture footage frame mm -hmm. by frame to produce realistic action. So cool. Both of these, um, this helped. The first was the rotoscoping. And then later on, I would do Instagram filters. And that's how I started gaining an Instagram following and slowly be became an influencer. And with influencing, brought that with my DJing to now with tech, I'm able to combine all three. And now there's NFTs and everything. So with, with filters, I feel that my friend Paige, for example, she's one of the top filter creators on the planet. Most consider her the top. And my friend Paige, as number one filter creator, she has been able to work with all these companies and, and created, uh, whether it's augmented reality filters or, or simply filters that bring people to another world, I find that very fascinating. And it's cool to see everything evolve. Yeah, yeah, and Marlon. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm pretty excited about um, people having uh, the ability to immerse themselves in in music experiences. Um, you know, VR right now. I think as far as like my favorite experience, synth riders, uh, Beat Saber, uh, are two rhythm games that that are really fun to play, get people moving, and, and also um, I think you know as as somebody that studied music, um, it's actually a pretty interesting way to learn rhythm, you know, uh, and and for all the DJs, Tribe XR, Tribe XR is, is a wonderful platform where you can learn to spin, um, you know, without uh, you know having to uh, you know go through the trouble of spending thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment. Huge, huge. Um, way to sort of break down the gates of, of the barrier to entry to, to DJing. And so um, that's all wonderful. Um, also, I think for in AR, you know, how we can create um, cultural experiences, uh, you know, I'm looking at uh, Jadu, you know, who's, you know, creating interesting, you know, game, game assets with Snoop Dogg, um, Sandbox, similarly, you know, there's a, there's a Snoop Dogg land in there. And so, you know, hopefully these spaces feel 
uh, feel natural and they feel, you know, right, you know, for the culture. Um, but these are some of the things I think are, are exciting right now, um, you know, it's in the space uh, where people can enjoy music and, and, and some of these technologies. Yeah, I definitely think these spaces could become more natural with time. Uh, they're all pretty new, but yeah. And EVB. Yeah, totally. It's very hard not to shamelessly talk about my own projects, but I do have quite a few that are exciting to me. Um, recently, uh, there's been a lot of work at Sony Immersive Music Studios. I got to work there this past summer. It was a lot of fun. Um, they created a digital Madison Beer, which was a high fidelity visual model of um, the singer herself. And almost, it feels almost indecipherable from reality. It looks so high quality in the graphics. Um, it was released on TikTok and it was also on Oculus VR. Um, if you guys want to check out that project, um, Porter Robinson also did a very cool multi-platform experience for Se Secret Sky. Um, I specifically loved that one because you could join from um, a regular desktop PC, your mobile phone, and also from VR. Um, and watch a, the release of the uh, album with your friends with these little virtual avatars, kind of like Decentraland. Um, and also another company that's exciting to me in this space is Harmonix. They've been doing some really incredible VR work, um, specifically in visualizing music, as well as um, music education, which is very near and dear to my heart because I've always found music to be a very esoteric language that you have to learn over many years of training. Um, and I have many friends who are musically inclined to, who are very great at coming up with melodies and lyrics. And I've always wanted to increase that space for them so that they could do so without necessarily have to train for 10, 15 years. Um, mm. So yeah, a lot of the work, especially as Sohi was talking about in terms of these boxes that we, these fields that we put ourselves in, I really love music technology and specifically in VR and AR because I've been able to break out of that box, maybe because it's a new field, but I've been able to write my own software, learn different game engines like Unity and Unreal. Um, I come from an electrical engineering software background, so that's a plus, but personally, it's very easy to learn these applications if you're excited about them. There's a lot of tutorials online that are free. Um, I also have really loved that I've been able to explore, you know, every different part of, of my work in terms of fields, like the graphics and the visual arts component of it, the music component of it, the coding component of it, and the human experience design component of it. I get to bring all of these things together in, in this type of work. Um, and there's very few places that you can do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You see, that's exactly what I'm trying to do as an upcoming music industry professional, trying to bridge all of my interests together, you know, like you're doing EVB, uh, music, science, uh, sustainability, everything together. That's pretty cool. Y'all are all very inspiring to me right now. <laughs> so um, my next question for you is how can artists or people interested in music and tech use the info um, all the info that you've given to me today and to our audience to promote their own careers and um, what steps can people take to stay ahead in the admin, in this realm, this new evolving realm of music and tech? Griffin. So first they can find a unique audience that cares for their talent and that can go for anybody. People can use BR right now and be the first to prove they're ready to do, which is take risks, explore, explore new materials with tech, and people pay for it. Getting into VR and build an audience over there means you're ready to make an audience base that will encourage you to new creations, and people will listen to it. And also, at the same time, be aware that the community right now is very sincere, so be ready for honest feedback as well. That's my advice. In addition, artists can use VR as a medium to to beat the competition in their own space by doing things like virtual concerts and creating an image that they have a unique appeal. Right now, the technology is opening more and more interactive tools such as, a meta, such as the metaverse, which is allowing API and more to let people create more AR-like experiences on the Oculus Quest 2, as well as other projects. So stay updated on all, all of these. For those who are developers, keep creating, create something new ASAP. My Instagram is Griffin Extra Fell. I'm always looking to collaborate, whether it's to do influencing or whether it's on the business side or whether it's on creative side, I always enjoy working with others. So releasing things is the first step. And I'd like to add that with, with all of this, 
when I first got started, I was very nervous with it all. Um, someone, as someone with autism, that was my mountain to climb. But I, autism also allowed me to be able to have what I used to see as something that I didn't embrace to now being able to be really good with code and everything. And everyone here definitely will have purposes in the new world of the metaverse more. Yes, and Griffin, I do have a follow-up question for you, if you don't mind, and I can open sure. it up to everyone else too. But um, I'd like to, since actually one of an audience members yesterday asked a question similar to this, and they were talking about should they um, build up a following their fan base outside of the virtual space first and then bring them over to virtual spaces, or should they start building a fan base in the virtual space? Both have their, both have, many pros but at the end of the day the real fans will, will go there no matter who do whatever they can to, to support so mm -hmm. the ones who already have the fan base are steps ahead but for those who are just getting new to this get started regardless if it's tech music fashion anything creative even sports sports is getting is huge in, in the nft industry and, and all the spiritual reality and more the, every everybody it's 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 publications and everything it's a very open community very nice community the only thing that i would say with this is that there there are blueprints like there was like a blueprint laid out almost and and that blueprint i feel is that the ones who who are keep who have this positive attitude and keep and keep working hard everyone on this panel they are they're all i they're all very very successful in what they do and I love the positive attitude that everyone brings here. And I think that with the fan base and everything, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm grateful to have amazing girlfriend, friends, um, amazing community that supports me. But most of all, to be on this panel is such an honor and to experience a new fan base as well. Thank you so much, Griffin. And we're glad to have you here too as well. Um, next, uh, Marlon. Yeah, you know, um, I think... Uh, well, you know, to the previous thing, you know, how to, how to get into, I, I would encourage people to go to hackathons. Uh, South by Southwest has a wonderful music hackathon that you can go to. And um, even if you're not a technical person, just get in there, ask questions, uh, bring your music and and find uh, those that are technically proficient to, to you know, collaborate with you. Um, also uh, checking out other conference. So shout out to Music Tectonics, for example. It's another wonderful group that that holds space. Um, you know, but, but ultimately, you know, one thing that I'd like to share um, is, you know, going back to sort of the, the, the function of music, you know, in society, you know, uh, really almost like a social lubricant it is, a, is a facilitator of, of social functions, right? We listen to music when we're sad, we're listening to music uh, when we want to feel happy, we want to listen to certain types of music when, you know, we're in social settings and, and we're, you know, meant to interact with each other. And so looking at you know, what social function your music facilitates, whether it's in the physical world or even in the digital world, I think is a great starting point um, so that you can connect authentically with, with people that, that are just going to um, have that meaningful connection with your sound. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. May you I add on that? Oh, yeah, sure, go ahead. So you gave some really good advice. And with that, I agree that there's a lot of, people in the industry that are very, very high up and they're, they're willing to give the advice. Like they're willing to give advice. Um, myself, anyway, that reaches out to my Instagram, I'll give authentic, um, great advice. It doesn't matter what the question is. I'll put, I'll put my heart and soul into it. And I'm very passionate about this space. And if you speak to such people on the top of the industry or field, they'll say one common thing that they're still, that they are always still learning, they're always exploring that and they're really amazed to see new things and won't stop doing so. So keep exploring with all of that and talent has no limits. Griffin, I really appreciate you saying that. That's, I'm sure so many people really needed to hear that right now. And I appreciate everyone else for saying all these like beautiful things today. Uh, EVV, you can go next. Yeah, yeah, totally. Thank you so much for that, Griffin. I totally 100% agree. Whenever anyone reaches out to me, I always respond with, as much as I can, as, as much as I can help my experience, right? Um, and I think that's something that's great about this field is that in the sense, in some ways, it's still fairly new because the general public doesn't 100%. It's kind of like this 
eerie zone to them. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, and I don't think a lot of, I think a lot of the stigma is behind just fear of the unknown, right? And making that unknown known is where the real excitement happens. Um, and so I personally believe in terms of using artists, using this type of technology to their advantage or this knowledge to their advantage, like keep an ear to the ground. Um, you would be surprised how many artists are actually working in AR and VR um, to help support their own creative endeavors. Um, there's also quite a bit of tutorials online for learning yourself how to work in this space. Like I said before, like these game engines that we use, um, Unity and Unreal, they're free, like personal licenses for developers. And there's a lot of resources out there that you can find um, just by Googling around. Um, another thing that I would note is, you know, keep your eyes open to this field in general. Like one way a lot of people get into AR and VR is just through gaming in general. Um, take takes inspiration from those experiences and use them to spur your work forward. That's amazing advice. And also I want to add that what the, the great thing about this industry and field is that people are keep, people keep moving like as fast as possible in this. The, people keep evolving with, with the tech in the space. The tech is evolving. Everything is evolving. And I love to see it. And there was, I wish that something I wish I knew when I first got into this was that I wish I knew that I could simply just explore and find out what's waiting for me in this world with whether it's tech and in general, and I'd be open to ideas and mediums as yourself, whether people admit, will admit it or not, everyone is an artist and they love to be free with that. And I'm sure that people realize that, that with everybody has a mountain to climb for my mountain. For, my, for me, that mountain was my autism. I recommend everyone to have a great support system with going into this tech space. I have some great friends. Some of them are in the audience right now, uh, Steve. And I consider him a mentor as well as a close friend. So uh, speaking from personal experience, being on a spectrum was very, very hard for me because I'm used to working harder, and, but I have a great drive to succeed. So regardless to the skill set, you just keep learning. Just keep learning. Um, I remember, it's amazing. You know, I remember hearing about. He's on here. This panel today. He's uh, from uh, Looking Glass. I remember hearing about Looking Glass Factory all the way back. Um, I was at a school up near Sacramento, and I would just be reading. I was reading like notes about this, like press releases and everything about Looking Glass. Never expected to be on the same panel as as someone who very inspired me in this industry. So. Well, circle moment. Yeah. <laughs> What about you, Sohi? Um, how can artists or people interested in music and tech use your info to, all the info you've given today to promote their careers? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone on this panel has said it best. Um, I'll say a couple of things just to reiterate is with new technology, especially in this field, I don't know why, but it's extremely community oriented. Um, in every level, whether, you know, with Decentraland, it's about connecting people from different places. With music, it's, especially if you're in the LA area, you know, music is very much about like people that you grew up with, like how you are starting from the ground up. What does it mean to not just bring yourself up, bring your friends up and so go back and support your communities if you do get to a place where you can. Um, AR, VR with, you know, online communities we've just done and maybe it is coming from gaming like there is this a lot of opportunity to get to know people who have a lot of different experiences who are willing to not just provide advice but learn us alongside you um which is also really great motivation it's not just this thing that you need to discover for yourself and right now because they're we're going into this new age of what is the metaverse uh more publicly they're going to be a bunch, a bunch of beta programs out there looking for new people to onboard. So, I mean, Encore being one of them, keep your eyes peeled for opportunities to test new technology, to be the first on platforms, to um, be the one to forge your own path and help figure out what this space really means and be really excited about trying everything and knowing what works the best for you, I think is super amazing. Um, finding out that, you know, there are people who 
want to understand what collective music ownership means versus people who just want to design and create visual music videos to people who want to share their music worldwide. They all, everyone has kind of different goals on what they view as success in this field. And I just think there's room for everybody. Um, you just got to take a chance. Definitely, definitely. Uh, take a chance on yourself too, yeah. Um, so I do have a couple more questions for you before we get into our audience Q&A. And uh, my next one is, um, how do you use VR and AR to evolve immersive media? So Griffin, you wanna take that one first? Yes, okay. media, media is all about storytelling and convincing the audience that the story is real or it's somehow part of them. Immersive media as we know it is most realistic content delivery technology made till now. And I'm sure there's a lot more that's gonna evolve. So I'm sure that with all of this, there are associated risks like motion sickness is a first time user that people may get, may get um, but people may get used to that. And no other medium storytelling is as convincing as immersive media. From stereoscopic rendering to ambisonic audio, a really powerful set of technology is in use of the immersive medium. And we use them to make the story as real as possible for the audience. Normally one would watch the content from a distance, but through our technology, we make them part of it. And in other words, with all of this, an example of this is those who get a VR headset first and they start attending virtual concerts in an alt space VR wave, or those who are performing with or and working with hardware, it, it psychologically takes time to get used to and make yourself used to the tech as well. However, the drive that everyone has in this tech space is something I've never seen and before, and it's incredible. And I feel that this space is evolving, involving very fast, and it's an amazing thing to see. Definitely, definitely. And I um, heard you mentioned getting motion sickness with the VR glasses. That happened to me the first time I used them. And I, I thought it was so crazy because I really, I wasn't even moving physically. I was looking at a screen. So it, it happens, y'all. It happens. <laughs> uh, Marlon, what about you? Yeah, you know, one thing that I think is very interesting about VR and AR and, and music and, and immersive media is how our rituals translate over to these like, you know, metaverse spaces, for example, you know, it, in the West, you know, it's very common to clap after a performance or after a jazz solo, we clap to show our appreciation as an audience. Um, in other countries, you know, in a lot of African countries, it's money, you know, a lot of money gets gets thrown at the performers, right? Um, yeah, right. It's very, very interesting, right? And so I think what's exciting for me is to think about how will we show that appreciation? How will we participate as an audience in these virtual spaces? How will we emote, uh, you know, uh, appreciation? You know, what's the equivalent of the lighter in the air at, at a concert, you know, in these spaces, you know, and, and what are the rituals? What are the things that, that are yet to be seen, uh, you know? Um, so so I, I'm excited about that. Well, you just brought up some really good points that I haven't thought about yet. And now it's like stimming off um, into more ideals that I'm thinking about. Um, I'm interested in that too. What about you, BB? Yeah, definitely. And that comes back to the fact that this space is fairly new in the sense of the public, right? Um, I really love personally to revel in the fact that the nomenclature hasn't been defined yet. And it's up to us, we get to define it and we get to define it together because this is not a one person show. This is a, we need to explore the realm of human experience and figure out how that translates organically into this space. Um, and so I personally feel that the evolution of, of immersive media is inherently tied to technology, especially AR and VR, because it's a redefinition of space. It's a redefinition of how we interpret the world around us. Um, and that can be on small levels, like how Marlon was talking about with our, um, our human uh, tendencies to, to follow uh, in terms of like whether it's a lighter or to clap or whatever that may be, but also on the grander scheme of things of, of how, how do we interpret this entire brand new world and how can we make this as exciting as possible? And we're at the forefront of that. 
um, yeah, it's, I'm always, I always get really jazzed about talking about this space. Yes, yes. And so you want to close this out for our um, panel interview? Yeah, sure. Um, I think hearing about that is really great. I, it just happens to be what we're working on right now. Uh, I am working on an augmented reality experience, but from your mobile phone so that you can consume AR live performances, right? And we're trying to mix seeing a real person, not avatar related with augmented reality sets. And I think one I mean, of the biggest- that. Yeah, I mean, we should, we should get back. <laughs> um, one of the biggest challenges though, I think that Marlon expressed so clearly is AR and VR actually has done quite a good job trying to develop the visuals so that you can feel like the visual feels real, that you're jumping into a digital space. But what we're missing definitely is from the viewer's perspective, how do they cross the boundary past your phone into the AR space? Or how do they cross the boundary of typical user experiences and break free from what they already know to what they hope it will be? And again, it is all of our, our prerogative to start to question what does it mean to have intimate, authentic, personal connections in this space that isn't just kind of filling your, your eyesight with visuals, um, but starting to, to feel things that are a little bit more subconscious and a little bit more subtle. I think that's the part that's gonna really start to transform these experiences from watching movies and watching shows um, to becoming an, a, a new human experience. Most definitely. Thank you all so much. And um, my last question for the interview portion, if you could briefly give me your answer for what advice you'd give someone going into the rest of the summit based off your experience in the, in the music and tech spaces. Um, and then we'll head into our audience Q&A. Uh, Marlon, would you like to go first? Yeah, I just say, you know, network um, and get to know folks from different backgrounds. Um, you know, I, I love the idea that everything connects and everyone has something to share and a unique point of view. Um, so going forward on in this in this uh, conference, just take it all in um, and try to connect with people offline too. you know, um, you know, after this, you know, uh, make some some connections so that you can follow up on the conversation. So very, very helpful. That's definitely Griffin. When people pursue their interests. They have a better chance of succeeding in life. And the best thing about being a DJ, NFT artist, influencer, and CEO is making people happy. And there's nothing like seeing people get up from a table to dance or their expression when they hear a song they love and being able to bring my art through augmented reality to quote life. And it's just amazing space to be in. And I'm really grateful to be part of this. Thank you so much, EBB. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I want to parrot both of those, but also say um, really putting yourself out there and getting, you know, downloading the applications and actually really trying them out. You would be shocked about how much you can learn just from that because you can really learn something from everybody. Doesn't matter their background, doesn't matter, you know, uh, what they specialize in or where even in AR, VR they may fall. There's, you can, I mean, from my personal experience, you can learn something from everyone just because everyone is human and the human experiences differ drastically from every person to person. Um, I also would like to say, if you are excited about the concept of just exploring virtual reality in general, um, there's so many apps on the app store for Oculus, for the Quest that's, I mean, I'm not saying it's like super cheap or anything, but if you do have access to a Quest headset, um, that's probably the, the most easy uh, accessible wise to use and, and afford. Um, I My favorite um, or my personal experience that I have on there is called um, Elixir. That's probably the biggest app that I've worked on. Um, so if you want to transmogrify your hands in a sorceress's laboratory, then uh, you can play that for free. <laughs> awesome, awesome, and so he... Um, I think it's keeping an open mind about how any of these conversations can apply to the passions you already have. Um, I don't think this is one of those fields where you have to be like, I'm going to be a new person, a new designer, and I have to have all these new goals to get started. Because a lot of times new technology feels really overwhelming and 
you don't necessarily need to prepare a whole manuscript and learn a bajillion things before you can try it. There are things that you can try today and those small steps will make this experience way more intriguing, way more motivating. And so with every talk that you hear from this conference, I think the question is how can I try something small today um, and not what will I do in two or three years? Definitely. Um, I love like the kind of focused on the present um, kind of ideal. And that will be the end of our, our um, panelist interview. Thank you so much, everyone. You said a lot of amazing things today. I know I felt inspired. I hope everyone in Decentraland felt inspired too. And we do have a few questions from them. We have about five minutes left. So I'll give a question to just one question per person and um, they'll see what y'all say. So my first question is for Emily. Uh, what are some challenges you have had to experience as you got into this space in the position you are in now? That's a good question. Uh, I don't have an hour, so I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> um, I come from, uh, I'm an Indian and Japanese background and I'm a woman in tech. So we'll just stop with, that's one. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing too is um, what Sohi was talking about before. In other fields that have been around for years and years and years, um, they tend to pigeonhole you. And there's these boxes that people try and say, oh no, you're a software engineer, you go here. Or you're a designer, you go here. Um, and a lot of work has been, on my end, has been put into actually, no, I'm not gonna follow these rules. I'm gonna learn whatever I wanna learn. And I'm gonna work on the things that I'm passionate about. Um, so. Those have been the biggest challenges for me personally is breaking out of those um, expectations, I guess, from everybody. Uh, but what I come back to is, you know what, it's my, this is my passions, this is my life, this is how I wanna change the world and that's what I'm gonna root myself in. Um, yeah, and if anyone ever wants to talk about any of those challenges, you can feel free to hit me up on socials. I love it, I love it. And I will be hitting you up, just so you know. <laughs> Marlon, um, how can new artists finding their sound and brand authentically use VR and AR introduce themselves to new audiences? Actually, I'd like to yeah. ask Marlon and Griffin this question. So Marlon first. Yeah, you know, keep it 100, keep it 100. You make sure that, you know, we make music um, as, as music makers or as DJs, you know, we, we present music because, you know, it satisfies our, our, our need to express first and foremost, you know, and if you're coming from that place um, and you're attracting, you know, audiences that, that, that can relate, you know, whose sound resonates with, um, I think you'll be good. I think where we land into trouble is when, you know, we're kind of swayed or, or made to sort of fit in a box, you know, that we may or may not, um, you know, really be in concert with, you know, and that might be as a result of a, of a, you know, a brand trying to get you to do something that just doesn't feel right, but, you know, you're trying to, you know, um, make it happen, you know, career wise. So I think if, if you keep it, if you keep it real, uh, with yourself, um, and you present your music authentically, whether you're like an Andean, uh, folk music, artist or you are a rapper or you are uh you know an electronic musician i think that um, you know authenticity is ultimately what will traverse any any media or format that's definitely griffin hey so i'm actually doing an nft album i'm really excited about uh, i'm not seeing that here and that nft album i have i have young thug on it I got huge, huge names. I got Corrupt on, I got guys from Wu-Tang on it, uh, Capadona, and I'm excited about that. I'm really excited about that. And bring to bring the OG vibe, you know, with West Coast, some, some East Coast guys, but mostly West Coast, and bring the new NFT, this, this new art style, that, you know, the anime arts. It's not, it's not exactly new, but you know, the, that cyberpunk anime art style, having that as the theme. Steve's in the audience, Steve's, Steve brought, I'm really grateful to Steve, my friend. He got me with the company who's, do, who's doing the marketing and everything for this. And this is going to be really cool. I'm actually going to be performing the metaverse with it all. I'm excited about it all. And this, I was working on this album for a year before, before I heard about NFTs for over a year before I heard about NFTs. And now I have multiple albums in the works ready to go. So I'm excited about winter's dawn. It's a, a metaverse type album, um, real West coast style beats. I'm very excited about that. 
And I'm really grateful to be sharing that with you all soon in the metaverse. Thank you so you much. You got a talk, Griffin? Yes. Congrats. <laughs> Sounds and dope. My last question of the day for Sohi, what do you think is going to be the next trend when it comes to creating experiences for the public? Oh man, that's a big one. <laughs> no, I just like realized. <laughs> next trend. Yeah. Um, I think I'm just really excited to see what people create visually. Um, I think, you know, right now we're seeing a lot of NFTs and stuff like that that's really rooted in kind of like simulation art and more like CGI stuff, 3D, what you expect to see in Blender, like that kind of stuff. And I just think that art and creativity right now has a lot of opportunity to break boundaries. And so with these people who are not necessarily just coming from gaming or coming from design or coming from art, I'm really excited to see what they're going to do next um, because they're going to be the ones to set this trend because those creative individuals will create things that you don't expect. And that will be the turning point, I think, for augmented reality and virtual reality is when it's not the thing that you already know, but it's the thing that you couldn't even expect to know that you wanted, right? And so I don't know what the trend is right now. I think the trend is the metaverse, all those hyped up articles right now, but I'm just super excited to see uh, kind of the next forger build out what creativity means in AR. Me too. I love every new drop that's come so far. So thank you all so much, EVB, Sohi, Marlon, and Griffin for being a part of this panel with me. I enjoyed hearing every everyone's responses. I need to know you better. And um, that will close us out for this panel. And next we have our last event of the day, uh, our keynote with uh, Alexi Rabadam, the CEO and founder of Finesse Media. So I will pass it over to them. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all.